Let's get together to co-create a breakthrough for freedom of energy, sustenance, healing, and regeneration of the human vessel. Welcome to Physique, the Free Energy Special Interest Group, where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Welcome to Physics 64th and the 65th meeting. And today is the 5th of June, right? I'm going to, there's not many people here today. Uh, and also the speaker got lost along the way to the meeting. So <laughs> we have to improvise and we're going to start straight away with a meeting that will be showcasing our R&D team. Okay, so I'm going to jump headlong into the PowerPoint presentation. So here we are, welcome to Physics 65th meeting. Today is Wednesday, the 5th of June, and uh, we have uh, my co-chair with me, Dr. Fresh Fresel. And um, actually there's no first session now because our speaker has got lost along the way here, or maybe got the times confused, uh, Larry Woods. So we are going to start straight away with the second session. Uh, Pontus Hesger being the uh, head of the Bui Marine Motor Generator Project with the R&D team with us here today. And uh, we are Physic, which is the Free Energy Special Interest Group. We are a platform where science meets spirituality. And I should not say no more because we want to get into the gist of things immediately and if you want to know more about our activities please go to our website truebeast.com slash physique.html as you can see here on the screen so coming back to um well please go to our youtube channel to check with our meeting recordings of all the meetings thus far and uh, somebody's typing on the uh, keyboard would you please uh, mute yourself uh, please mute yourself. Yes. And uh, the 65th Physic Meeting Agenda is, uh, I've done a quick presentation of Physic right now, the new members. And um, we are supposed to have Larry Woods here, our speaker for today, speaking about his work and experience as an inventor. Unfortunately, somehow he's not here. And uh, then uh, we will jump headlong into the second session. Uh, which will continue with the Physic R&D team headed by Pontus and Fress in the making of the Bui Morin motor generator. And then uh, having finished that, we will then uh, adjourn this meeting to the 66th Physic meeting on the 3rd of July, 2019. All right. So if you want to write to me, it's crystal at truevisionofpeace.com. Okay. Thank you. So that's it. And uh, right. I think I will just have to pass the microphone over to you, Fres, our co-chair for the day to introduce the R&D team and to introduce the uh, subject that we are going to present today. Thank you very much, Crystal. Uh, we've got a great team and we've been <laughs> working several months now uh, on the motor generator. Uh, basically, the first part of the project was to get the key components. And basically, they're, they're wall motors, fairly large ones. And we're doing uh, both sizes so that we can test across the different uh, generator capacity and what they can do. Uh, Pontus is working on one of the larger units. Uh, he'll, he'll explain a little bit here in a moment. Uh, Avin and I have been working on the smaller ones, and we're sourcing materials and sourcing the circuitry components right now, plus actually building the framework to house these uh, motors as we're working on them and testing on them. And the one thing that we have found is that uh, the need for testing equipment, and uh, we're uh, you burn up a few MOSFETs, you burn up a few Adrenos, and you start thinking that maybe we need a little better equipment. Uh, Pontus, you, I'm going to toss the 
mic to you, and uh, then we'll go over to Avon and get get rolling on. Hello, yeah. Uh, well, we are. I am just uh, uh, working on uh, the big one or the bigger one. Uh, it is not finished yet, so uh, uh, I can show. I have made a, a little bit more details. Uh, moment only. I made uh, this uh, hub uh, that will uh, also uh, uh, be a hub to uh, uh, a belt drive uh, in the future. So uh, I thought I have to balance it all along with uh, other parts. And uh, the balancing uh, of uh, the rotor is going ahead. Uh, here we have the main generator, the old one, and on another 6.5 kilowatt rotor. I have uh, balanced it. Uh, with a uh, seven tech uh, uh, in between the lines, which uh, was really easy to do, but it takes some time to cure, and uh, I can't spin it and look for how much unbalance is left until uh, it has dried. So it takes a little bit time, but uh, at least I will not have to drill or something like that in the rotor, which I prefer not to do. So, May, may I? Yeah. Yes, Avin. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, so, we just discovered that the motors, both the big and the small one, are made of aluminum wires. And that's yeah. uh, pretty significant, right? Uh, the wires are coated in a plastic uh, insulated. Uh, which we thought to be copper coating, but it was not. Uh, there you go. Thought, is, uh, oh, that's copper. Yeah, copper uh, aluminum it, wire. But it it's it not looks a... that way. But uh, it's uh, yeah. I think uh, email or epoxy coated, and here you see it's aluminum. So yeah. The thing the about the aluminum wire is that, I, that I, yes. sorry. Yeah, uh, the question I was going to have, Pontus, uh, some of that they call it magnetic wire, and it, it's aluminum core with a copper coating on yeah. it, and then a shellac layer on top of it. Is that what you're looking at, or is this strictly a a, slack, a shellac type of insulation over the top of aluminum mm -hmm. wire? It's uh, shellac uh, insulation over the aluminum wire, so uh, so that's quite interesting. Uh, in Sweden, you don't use the uh, aluminum wire to uh, household uh, uh, or in the house at all. You use only copper wire, so. Uh, this has maybe other properties, and uh, that uh, we will find out about that. And I think, Avin, you have some uh, theory about that. 
Yeah, I have some thoughts on that because I know for a fact that aluminum is a negatively charged uh, material or a metal, meaning it will absorb or a positive charge will flow from from the positive, of course, and to the negative. And in the case of our motors, that means that when you have a resonant cavity in your coils, which produces positive charges, the, the neutral ground, which are a common ground for, uh, for all coils, the, the other coils acts as a air ground for, for the, uh, the coil that is being excited. So it flows from, in the sense you can say that the charge flows from uh, the positive to the negative or the negative flows from the negative to the positive. Um, so it, the motor has kind of built in its own ground right there in the, the coils because of that aluminum. Uh, and that's my theory. But, uh, or the hypothesis, I suppose. Uh, when it comes to the, the phasing of the motors, this is very important to, to have the current. Because what we are striving for in the motors is to run them at high voltage, high frequency, or re relatively high frequency or relatively high voltage. And we want to leave the amperage as much as out of the game as possible as to avoid heating. Okay. Uh, maybe I can bring up a uh, yeah. stop shot. If I if I if you see this uh, sinusoidal waveform here, um, this is phase one. And then we can have a red one. This is a very crude drawing, but I think it can get the point through, nevertheless. So in the case of the phase thing, so you have the blue, the blue wire or the blue signal. When it starts to go down, the phase two is, ex is starting to get excited. So it actually retards the, the downfall of the magnetic field in such a way that it doesn't, uh, it provokes a current flow, but it only allows that current flow if it's grounded. It, 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 you have to ground it somehow for, for current to be present. So if I, uh, the thing is that we are, that grounding can be done with a capacitor, right? So, two seconds, Ron. I'm going to, if you, this is the pulses, okay? Which kind of builds up the magnetic field for very, very little. But the magnetic field will collapse very quickly. And we don't have any uh, current, unless we have a phase two that comes in and start to hold up the blue, the, the phase one. So it, it, it's, it supports 
phase one from collapsing very quickly. And the, the slowing of the collapse is our current flow, this part. Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? This triangle, this red triangle that I'm trying to draw here, that's that's actually in, in the case of the phase one, that's the current, the amperage that that it, that, that is going to uh, kind of create the current in your motor. So we had in the uh, Rene talked about this that he sees current that he doesn't understand where it comes from. Well, I think it's partly due to phasing, and secondly, it's part to uh, to the aluminum wire. So if you were to ground the ends in a earth ground. trying to make an earth symbol. You would have even more negatively charged reference point, which will, would allow for even more amperage. So this is my thought about, this is why we have this facing where, where in the, uh, the same happens when the red starts to collapse. Um, Red wire, the red signal. So each time the face is excited, getting excited, or each a coil. Is getting excited. It's excited for very little is very little energy or a little. Uh, it, it, it excite the coil, get a high magnetic field, strong man, magnetic field for very little. But since we also, the magnetic fields are getting into a, a kind of fist fight or uh, start to buck each other, like to bucks. They are actually kinetic forces. They're starting to starting to uh, cause the current flow. Just just the same, same phenomena in the generator. On the generator side, there's two magnetic fields that fight each other. So when the, the more uh, voltage you you throw at the generator, the more current you, you're going to get. The same is uh, true for uh, regular motors, right? And you get more current. When, when, you, when we pulse the coils there, we are getting the magnetic excitation for very little uh, because of the pulse thing. It's a very low cost. And the fields and uh, get into a buck fight, um, like in the, this one, right? And it slows, it, it kind of acts as, it makes the blue phase one, it, it, it supports it so it's, it doesn't get, uh, uh, it's not allowed to fall down very quickly. And this is so. So the triangles that I show here, those are the uh, those are the current phase, the the phase where you have the current. I think it's getting very messy now. <laughs> Hopefully, people are getting the guesses. There's a chat. Let's 
So what you're saying is, is that you're setting up a magnetic wave along that sine, those three different sine waves that is actually longer in duration than the individual frequencies, the, the phases as they, they go in. You have, but phase one kicks in, phase two kicks in, and then phase three begins to kick in as phase one drops, but you have an, an elongated magnetic period that causes the motor to drive to rotate further in the direction that it's spinning. The thing that I think Ron was trying to bring up is the magnet, the aluminum wire, you're calling it an air ground, but it is also another way of saying the ground is, is a capacitance. It has a, a, a little bit of capacity to hold current for a period of time and then release it. So air ground or a capacitor, similar in how it functions. Go ahead, Avon. Yeah, I, I think uh, you probably are right. You're right because all coils, when they are coiled and we have the shellac there, uh, will cause uh, each coil to have a capacitance, right? So in that sense, each coil coming after that coil will also uh, yeah, hold a certain amount of charge from the magnetic field of the coil. So the coil, the magnetic field collapses, discharges into the other coils as maybe as a capacitor. I'm not quite sure about this, but um, I think the point is, is that we want to build the magnetic field for very little, and we want to prolong the collapsing by using the magnetic field from the the, sec the neighboring coil. So there's always this sequencing in this type of motors, du -du 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 right? And each time is trying to collapse the the, the, the field. Collapse. It's not alone because it's just about getting excited. <laughs> now, to go one step further than what you're talking here, if you increase the capacitance of that wire, well, let's say you put it into an earth ground, then you slow down the frequency that it can operate. The greater the capacitor, the slower its recovery time between cycles. So that by matching the coils in, in the motor so that they're as identical as possible, and I think we've already proven with our testing that they are not identical. They're dissimilar. Each one's a little bit different. This sets up a, a ringing, but... It, it's, it sets up not only one coil can't take as much as what's available, and that, that gives you your outflow back into your circuit, as far as I understand what's going on here. Okay. I, what I'm trying to say is I don't think the motor will run as well if we increase the capacitance on that tight end, that, that air ground end that you're showing. It works well, the system works well as is because it's almost balanced, but if you imbalance it or put up a bigger capacitance, I don't think you're going to get uh, the torque or the RPMs out of your motor that we have right now. You might be right. Uh... I don't know for sure. Uh, we'll have to test this, of course. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it's just a suggestion. But it's going to be interesting to see uh, when we test test to see the, the effects. It's all the testing that can prove all this. When you get in on the bench,
as we try to explain to everybody, theory is really nice and predictive models are really nice to work with, but it's the bench testing that confirms that the theory and the models are actually predicting what they're supposed to predict. And so the bench testing becomes super important. Yes, and uh, my understanding is that uh, the ordinary uh, counting ways uh, for this, they, uh, they are not correct. So there is something else going on. Uh, Interesting point, Ivan. Ivan, uh, anything else? Yeah, I think actually uh, Pontus was talking about that uh, earlier today. Um, one time that. Um, They're breaking up. A compass had used the, a, a ground, earth ground, and had improved his uh, efficiency of the motor or the power of the motor. Yeah. By introducing the uh, the. Uh, You know, by introducing your earth ground, but you can't you can't just use the regular house mains ground uh, as it can influence the grid. The, the grid. So you should make sure that the ground you use are are from a ground ground in your own backyard, right? Is this audible? No. What I'm saying. It's barely audible. Sorry. No problem. Uh, maybe you can adjust uh, the volume a little bit, uh, Ivan. In the meantime, I can show uh, uh, how uh, a motor that runs looks like. He's using uh, two uh, 
150 watt uh, lamp to load it. What this loading does is put the drag on the load, it down, but it also causes a lot of sound as, as the <laughs> magnets are going past the with the load. Yes, uh, um, he uses uh, a second uh, uh, Samsung motor and he uh, loads that one with a 150 watt uh, bulb. Mm -hmm. The circuitry he has built is uh, looking this way. Oh. This is the right socket. Uh, and uh, <coughs> It uses the Arduino board here, the voltage divider part, and the drive uh, part for the MOSFETs, for the H bridge. And uh, yeah. It's not really ready yet, but uh, on its way. Here we have it uh, from upstairs. And uh, yeah, if we go back, we can look at uh, the last uh, thing that I made balancing.
uh, I'm down at two grams and five grams. It started out uh, uh, on the left, 15 grams, and uh, on the right, 11 grams. So it's a little bit more to go, but it uh, will uh, be f ready or finished uh, maybe uh, later this week. Yeah, it's important to, especially on these larger generators, to have them balanced. Uh, small vibration will give you a lot of noise. Uh, larger amounts of vibration will actually tear the device apart. And at yeah. 1500 RPMs, that's the last thing we want to see is the machine coming apart or the motor coming apart. We have also uh, a drawing for the hub. This is for uh, a 30 millimeter keyed shaft. Uh, if you want to test, uh, just let us know. Maybe we can uh, offer you uh, a hub for the LG motor at the beginning. The Samsung motor will uh, uh, come eventually also drawing for that. And uh, we can make them uh, also and uh, sell them. Pontus, do you want to explain why we have to have a special hub made for these? Yeah. Uh, these motors, they have a plastic hub uh, when you buy them as new or if you find them in a washing machine. Uh, this is a stainless steel hub and uh, it has uh, properties that uh, it has a very small run out on the surfaces that the outer rotor will uh, be fastened against. And uh, that will also take down unbalance and not at least uh, the, uh, the, uh, the magnets, they shouldn't have uh, any uh, in and out. So they have to go, and go in the same line all the way because else uh, you will have a varying magnetic field also and that would not be so great uh, we will put this uh, drawing out and uh, eventually will we we will uh, do it as a uh, cnc machine written uh, drawing also We will wait a little bit uh, to take uh, to uh, take out the drawing uh, because uh, we are waiting Samsung uh, uh, build this image also and to uh, make a real nice drawing of that. So we release both at the same time. The LG motor seems like a little bit better choice. Uh, it's uh, not, uh, uh, if you buy it, you can have it uh, with cable. The center part is just to bolt loose and uh, the Samsung motor has the disadvantage. You have to cut out the plastic center and uh, redo uh, it with a Nice hub. Uh, can you explain, Pontus, what you have to do with the LG motor again? I didn't catch that. Do you have to cut out the plastic or is that just screws? Uh, it's just screws. So uh, I can show you a photograph of that. No. 
The LG metal, it's it's uh, stator, and this is the outer rotor that uh, rotates, and this is the cable. It cost about uh, hundred fifty dollars, and uh, <coughs> this is the part that uh, we are exchanging for the hub. It's just uh, screwed, three screws. Uh, the hub will have uh, uh, six holes, so you will have to drill three more holes, but it's easy. They are really, uh, already marked, so it's no problem. Uh, and this part on the Samsung motor, you have to cut it out. You can't just uh, uh, loosen it by loosening some screws. And that's what, a little bit more uh, difficult. What what kind of bolt size do you have for for the screws there? Uh, this is uh, M6 uh, screws, uh, organal. Uh, I use six M8, eight millimeters uh, bolts. Okay. So it's uh, quite different. Uh, eventually, this is uh, 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 what you call hull sensor device. Maybe in the future we also can use that to determine uh, where the rotor is at. Uh, but for now, we don't use it. Yeah, we are, the case of sensing the signal is happening at the low side MOSFET, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's being fed back to the Arduino, right? Through exactly. the voltage, voltage divider. Mm -hmm. And we actually yeah. have we actually have a problem, don't we, with that currently? That to find uh, to figure out how high uh, resistance we should use to set, to just make sure we are taking out the uh, the spikes from from coming back from the coils, the back EMF. Yeah. So it doesn't take out the Arduino because you just want to have maximum five volts going into the Arduino. Exactly. Uh, or else you will burn the Arduino. So uh, this is the Samsung motor. And if you look at it, it has a hub and it's melted in uh, the. So that's why you have to cut it out. And that's a little bit harder to do. Or else uh, the coils are almost the same, and so on. So, and the outer router is also made of uh, pressed steel. Uh, by the way, this is uh, Patrick Kelly's chapter thirty-two, and uh, he is also publishing. Uh, uh, um, Partly from us and uh, from other sources also. Uh, so uh, you can follow uh, the updates on his, his site also. Of course, it's not uh, completed yet, but uh, uh, it will be in the future.
I hope so. We have an excited dog in the in the audience today. Yeah. What's the camera name? Who let the dog salt? <laughs> Somebody's got an open mic with the dogs. I was going to bring Ron in real quick on this, uh, but I see he's left for a moment. I'll catch him on the back, having to do with EMF signals going to the coil. Uh, I, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mute myself. Yeah. I, uh, okay, you can have Ron speak uh, quickly because we have uh, Carrie Stanton here as well, who's a uh, who's got an electronic um, background and uh, he has been following physics for about a year and is very, very interested in the motor generator. Okay, perhaps Carrie would like to contribute with some knowledge as well after Ron. <laughs> sure. Yeah, go Great. on then, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ron, uh, in our last Monday meeting, we were talking about the differences between the coils that are in the motors and your experience with ham radio antennas. Do you want, to, uh, how do we tune them? How do we, uh, what type of things happen when you charge up a, a coil or an antenna like this? Well, the, uh, an antenna is only resonant to one frequency. That, that's, 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 first of all, that's one of the first things you learn in radio. Um, you, can, you can truly only tune an antenna precisely to one frequency. Although, <clears throat> normally, you know, an antenna is used over a, a pretty good range of, of uh, uh, frequency. You know, um, I, I used one, one antenna for the 75-meter uh, phone band, but it was, you know, it was 130 feet of wire. Well, not quite. Let's see. 124 feet. Yeah, 100, 124 feet. Two 62 foot uh, legs um, that were extended in a, you know, in a pyramid fashion or a V fashion. It's referred to as an inverted V as far as the, uh, you know, in other words, it's fed at the high point and then the two legs uh, go out in a V fashion. And that, that covers a, a wide range, but what I what I said is actually true. You only get resonance at one one precise frequency, and that's that's um, that's true of any any um, antenna that's going to resonate uh, for what you want it for. Okay. And of course, you, you can modify it with capacitance. You can modify it with uh, more inductance. You can modify it by uh, top hatting it. You can put a you can put a, a top hat, what's referred to as a top hat, on top of the end on top of the radial, and that that uh, lowers the frequency. Radio stations do that all the time. I've got one not far away from me that. Uh, is an AM station. That's that's how they uh, get resonance. They use a a large uh, hexagonal uh, top hat on top of their antenna tower. They actually their their tower is actually the antenna, and it's like what is that thing about 700 feet tall, something like that. To really be resonant frequency, it's added it would have to be more like uh, 1,000 to 1,100 feet. But that top hat makes a makes a big difference in uh, in the resonance of the of the uh, uh, broadcast station, you know, because that's Thanks, that's their transmit and receive frequency. Thanks for sharing that, Ron. By the way, has anybody noticed Rennie's here? Yep. Yeah, Rennie. Yeah. Pontus, you got him in. Oh, cool. Hi, welcome, Rennie. Yeah. You... Hi. Good evening. Hi, this is Crystal here, Renee. Would you like to share with us 
what you you had achieved with your motor generators that Pontus was raving about. <laughs> Rene? Yeah, I shared the knowledge, I think, on Monday. But um... We don't have much time left, but we just want to see what you've got there before we close this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> So I can show you, uh, or I can provide you with a link uh, that you can see a YouTube video where the motor is uh, pretty good running and it was discussed on Monday. Uh, I cannot share this because I have a poor internet connection today. But I, uh, I think I have really already shown it. So. Ah, okay. Yep. Hang on, Pontus. Have you shown it already in the last meeting? No, tonight. Oh. Why don't you just show? Oh, you just show me that. That. No, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, that noisy one with the lights. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first test on it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you have some blueprint diagram or anything like that that you would like to share, Rene? You want to explain? If you can't do it, I think Pontus would be able to share screen with that. And you explain. <laughs> Yeah, I can, <clears throat> I can explain to you the circuit uh, that is based on. Um, so Pontus has to open up the simple circuits board, I think, where we can see the, the circuit diagram and then can, I can tell you what modifications I did to this uh, circuit to get this drum running. Yeah. Uh, is it good with uh, uh, Patrick Kelly's diagram? Yeah, I think this is the, yeah. the right document. So, yeah, we got it. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> uh, as you can see in the picture, this is the gate driver for the MOSFET. And uh, you can see uh, two capacitors in there. Uh, and. Uh, it is a good idea to put uh, ceramic capacitors in parallel because they can uh, give away the charge much faster than these uh, electrolytic capacitors. So uh, without them, you will not get this gate driver running stable. So this is the, uh, the first modification uh, that you should uh, make to the circuit. Uh, the second, uh, I use another diode. I use a 1N4007, which uh, works pretty good. And uh, I uh, use uh, plus 18 volts uh, on the gate driver because if I, you use higher voltage uh, on the gate driver, it will uh, operate also uh, more accurate than when you, you feed the sky with 12 volts. So, uh, this is uh, important for the gate driver section. <clears throat> so you can use these MOSFETs, the IRF840, which will work pretty good. Uh, they are cheap, so uh, it's no problem when they uh, run very, very fast if you do your research on this, uh, on this motor. Uh, but I use uh, other ones with uh, less resistance and uh, these are called 20 uh, NS50, uh, I think. And uh, they are rated at about 600 volts and the uh, 840s are rated about 500. And uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, the main modifications that I did uh, on, on uh, this section. And uh, you're not running uh, at 400 volts, yet uh, you're running uh at the lower voltage also, Rene? Yeah, it, uh, I tested uh, this circuit uh, till 310 volts and till this voltage everything uh, works fine. Uh, but uh, you will uh, run into problems uh, maybe with the, uh, the DC power supply. So if you don't have uh, fast capacitors on the DC power supply, you will need another capacitor uh, which you put between uh, drain on the upper MOSFET and source on the lower uh, MOSFET. Uh, I put a parallel capacitor in the air which is rated to about 300 volts and has uh, one microfarad. And uh, this is a, 
uh, MKP X2 uh, capacitor, and uh, you need one which is capable to uh, give you enough energy for the switching action. What you can do to protect uh, the MOSFETs is um, you can put uh, a 10K uh, resistor between gate and source and uh, you can also do experiments with a Sina diode, uh, with a 16 volt Sina diode uh, that you put also between gate and source to protect uh, the MOSFETs. But uh, I did this as they uh, teach us at ele in electronics, but it uh, didn't work. So the MOSFETs uh, will always burn if you if you got a, a nice response from your <laughs> PLDC drum. Yeah. <laughs> so what I what I uh, seen uh, the last so or, or today I should say is um, that I redesigned the. Uh, the voltage divider section uh, because I run into problems uh, because I built uh, this uh, wrong. So I use um, these uh, popular, uh, I think you, you call it uh, PCB boards, uh, where you can test your circuits with all the holes in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found out, so the way I, I, I built this. Uh, it's not good because uh, I run into problems when I use the 31 uh, kilohertz frequency from the from the uh, Arduino. Uh, it only works if I use uh, less frequency, but this is a problem of the board and not of the of the um, of the wiring itself. So, so the the, the circuit is is correct, but. You should not build this on these uh, popular boards because they will not work on higher frequencies. Uh, maybe we have to add a comparator or something like that. Yeah, I think it will work pretty good with a comparator, but uh, you have also make sure that uh, the uh, the wiring is is correct, so that you have no um, uh, no signals that. Uh, come into the, the, the logic section. So that's, that's a problem because if, you, <clears throat> if you're doing uh, uh, much RPM and uh, you get extra voltages from somewhere, then uh, the motor will maybe kick out of his field and uh, produce uh, very, very nasty noises. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's how I built it for the moment and uh, it runs, um, Pretty good, I think, and it's uh, also um, uh, very powerful. Yes, the motor will have a lot of torque, and uh, also uh, uh, the torque will stay the same. Uh, and the nice thing is, when you can drive it to, with a higher speed, you will have the same torque and higher RPM. And then you can gear it down to uh, a generator or something else, and you will have much, much more power. If you gear it to uh, one to two, hello, two to one, you will have uh, the double uh, power on the mm. generator. Renee was talking about a, a breadboard and uh, I just, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a breadboard like this, but this is one that I've done circuits on. It's uh, it's a universal, let's see, yeah. It's a universal uh, breadboard. It's made by Archer, uh, which is an old, uh, actually that's the old name for Radio Shack, but uh, you, can, you can do almost anything on one of these as far as, you know, hooking up a power supply or whatever. Just a little different, little different uh, style than uh, you know putting something through the the perf holes that you have on the, just the, the flat boards. All right. <clears throat> um, okay, I think we are running out of time. Um, <clears throat> just keeping the meeting on time. 
Could we have uh, anybody from the floor who wants to chip in with sharing of knowledge um, or sharing an idea or something? What about you, Carrie? Carrie Stanton from uh, Canada? Do you want to speak up, Carrie? Or if you have a question, so. Oh, anybody me. has a question? Yeah. What about you, Stephen? Stephen? Trish has been in here too. Daniel is here too. Come on. Uh, okay, I'm unmuting you now, Daniel, if you want to speak up. Gosh. It doesn't get unmuted. Mm. Carrie says, thank you, but I'm not prepared for this meeting. Thanks, Carrie. OK. OK, Carrie. Thank you. Oh, Paul is here. Paul Rao. Do you want to do you want to share anything at all, Paul? I don't know of anything. I just got here, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks. Okay. Right. Uh, Tricia, have you got any? You have been a a, a source of uh, information, really. <laughs> I mean, you've been recommending uh, names like Adam Apollo. I did try to contact him. He talks a lot about free energy technology. And uh, do you want you want to share with us some thoughts, Trisha? I'm just going around the table a bit before we close the meeting. Adjourn it. I mean, somebody that just came to mind was um, I think I had sent you some stuff on David Sarita, who asked. Yeah, I did. I did try to contact him as well. I tried contacting both Adam as well as uh, Sarita. Yeah, they have yet to respond to me. A reply. Yeah, I'm sure they're super busy, but they're super awesome sources. So, no. and it's so spot on with the work that we do here, right, <laughs> Trish? Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your recommendation. Oh, you're supposed to go to Bali for the New Earth, um, what do you call it, event? <clears throat> yes, I'm super excited. I am definitely getting things ready to go out there. So excited for you as well. <clears throat> when you are out there, would you ask Sasha Stone about his free energy device? What happened to it? The one that he was launching it <clears throat> a while back. Sure. I have a feeling that they'll probably go into it since they're speaking up on um, the distortions of 5G and those sorts of things. And, and uh, you know, they usually talk about what is the mm -hmm. troublesome sources in and then they have the solution. So hopefully we'll be able to have a um, update on that for sure. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And do ask him if he would want to speak at Physique. The door is always open for him. Okay. I'll Thank definitely you. let him know. I'm sure he'd be able to have lots of um, resources there too. Um, the man that works with him a lot too, or one of them, is um, Dan Winter. Yeah, and actually I just saw that he was, I think he could be out here in Arizona or California doing some workshops and he actually has his devices with them, the Therify. Oh, that's um, good, yeah. Yeah, you know, those look like the Egyptian, um, mm -hmm. um, the glyphs uh, in Egypt, how they have the light bulb source, sort of. It looks like a light bulb. And his Therify sort of looks like that, so. Kind of, it's pretty exciting. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I I will look out for him because uh, there's another friend of mine who who knows him pretty well as well. Well, if you know him and you would like to ask him to come and speak at Physique, oh, I'll be so happy. Thanks, sis. Sure. Any time I can help. I usually just meet people briefly. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a. I just and 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 try to. Um, really follow, keep up with, with what everyone is doing. So that's usually my extent, except for Fernando. And he was supposed to be out here. And, you know, these people really 
you know, just travel around and go where, where they, you know, they are able to, whoever gives them a resource. And so um, he must have got sidetracked and doing lots of other things because I haven't heard back from him. Mm-hmm. Her Vasa. Okay. Right. Anyway, hey, it's lovely having you here today with us, uh, Trish. And uh, uh, is there anything else that you would like to bring up? Uh, I'm going around the table. Well, I can say that Swissindo has some big fronts on um, up and coming, you know, so hopefully. Talking about funding, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So. You know, there's a lot of those, and I think everyone's doing them, and everyone's coming together, and um, you know, it's got to it's got to give at some point. So, you know, I think it's going to come from many different sources, and everybody's coming together on it. I think is going to what's going to happen. So, yeah, it's looking up again for on those fronts. Absolutely, and when those funds do come out, we are ready, and we've been working very hard for the last. Uh, I would say three, four weeks, one month or so. The R and D team has been working feverishly on the on the prototype on the motor generator, and we are so proud to have such a wonderful, brilliant team who is just so enthusiastic to get the uh, technology going in the right direction and, and performing very well. And uh, on the other hand, on the the structuring of the facilitation side facilitation site will be uh, owners will be on me and James Ring and uh, some of us uh, Fres does help in here as well uh, and he's got one foot in the uh, R&D department too and Pontus is holding up very well with uh, the devices he's coming up with which is so amazingly uh, like uh, precision engineering you know to dot he's so skillful with that and we've got such an excellent team and with Avin here helping out very brilliantly, Paul, uh, Sergey, and uh, the rest in the team. And we've got Warren Kilo as well from uh, Canada. And uh, well, now we've got Kerry with us and uh, Rennie. Oh, it's, it's superb. It's fantastic. And uh, on, on the uh, facilitation department uh, structuring, we've been working very hard for about, especially me, <laughs> for about three weeks or so. I've been structuring and structuring and restructuring and coming up with a system where once the funds come in, we know exactly what to do and we can just, you know, uh, from day one, hit the ground running. Okay, so everything's in place, everything's ready. And thank you so much for choosing to be here with us in this meeting, all of you here who are attending this meeting. I suppose I've gone round the table already, unless, uh, Avin, you got any last uh, thoughts that you would like to share for this meeting before we adjourn it? Thank you, all good. Okay. I'm all good. You're all good. Thank you. And um, well, uh, Pontus, anything else you want to include that you hadn't? Any unfinished business for this meeting? Oh. Oh, Pontus, you're sharing. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that you still have some stuff to share. Go on. Volume Pontus. Yeah. Pontus? Pontus, you are muted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so now it's fixed. Uh, oh. uh, I just uh, want to say uh, that uh, this is the small motor that uh, the D team also is uh, working on. It's a uh, Small motor, but uh, and it's uh, fairly cheap, uh, so that may uh, get uh, lights running in a small house. So it's a it can be a small uh, generator also. 
Okay, that's all. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Pontus. Thank you for doing all this wonderful work that would really put us directly sitting right on our mission. Thank you. Um, okay, so Daniel, if you've got anything else you want to say, and uh, uh, would you be able to speak up? Okay, maybe not. Right. Oh, okay. I think that's about it. Stephen, you, you don't want to say anything here? Nothing that you want to speak out about for this meeting? Rene, Ron? Press? Uh, okay. Uh, basically, really quick, the little motors that Pontus was showing to give you an idea what size they are, they fit nicely in the palm of your hand. They have a shaft that goes through to both sides that are attached to pull to different devices. The mounting brackets are nicely placed and easy to work with. There is rubber bumpers that you can mount to on each side, or you can press them into a metal can or holder. So uh, very nice, uh, simple four wire connection. And uh, it's looking very promising, at least for a test motor or for a demonstrator to take to shows and things or to maybe run a series of lights. I, I can, uh, I'm going to I can add to, to that for us. Uh, basically, the the little motor that you have there, it, it has a wire uh, going into a circuit board uh, that is not visible when you're holding up. Uh, you have to uh, open it, the can. Um, and actually, you have to desolder three points to get the circuit board out. It's very easy to work with. Uh, it's not a hard operation if you know how to uh, use this soldering iron. So this is how you would Correct. open, like the press was showing now, it's, it's how you would open the, the casing. You would have to use a, a what is it called, the a plier? A pair of pliers, of, yeah. yeah. So you just flip it open, and then you can. Yeah, they're they're bent over tabs, simple simple to access, and then they can be closed back of one or two times. You can do that without breaking them off. Uh. Uh, there's a um, a note, a message from Rene. Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to show the link, Pontus. Uh, I don't have the link uh, right now, but uh, you find it uh, on uh, the uh, it's the link uh, on uh, Patrick Kelly's uh, PDF. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think I've gone round the table now. Is there anything else anybody wants to speak up before I close this meeting and adjourn it to the next? I think we're ready to go. Thank you very oh, much, Crystal. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank Everybody. you very much, Press, for co-chairing this meeting so well, and Pontus for sharing what you got there with the R&D team. Thank you, everyone.